This is my 66th video on my work with OO Gauge. See part 1 of this series for my reasons for getting into OO Gauge when I already had a lot invested in working in N Gauge and I didn't really have space available for a large fully operational OO Gauge layout. Also see my lengthy series on my N Gauge railway modeling for smaller and more complex scenery and smaller scale trains running. This part does show the layout quite a bit, but it's not really about the layout as such, but rather about my attempts to shoot better video of trains on the layout using different camera options. I do have quite a few different cameras. I have several Mobius cameras, an original Mobius with the original standard lens, a Mobius with the extra wide-angle lens, and a Mobius Mini which in terms of focal length is somewhere between the other two. The downside of the Mobius cameras for shooting railway video is that they don't have any built-in viewfinder, so you either have to connect them to a laptop to see exactly what they're pointing at, or just point them in about the right direction and hope. Not really ideal. It's less of an issue with the wide-angle Mobius, as that does capture everything over an extremely wide angle. That's what I've been using to provide the wide overview shots of the layout in several of my videos. And the original standard Mobius is what I was using as a hat cam, as it works quite well for that. You just clip it to the brim of your cap and it shoots pretty much what you're looking at. I used to use it extensively for RC flying videos like that. Then I have the little SQ11 action cam. Which isn't great as regards video quality, but it does work quite well as a tiny camera to mount on trains and show things as a ride-along. I saw someone selling on eBay recently a wagon with an SQ11 mounted on it as an OO gauge camera wagon, and they were asking something well over three times what the SQ11 itself sells for. It's a very cheap camera. If you don't mind waiting for shipping from China, you can buy it still for less than $4 US on AliExpress. I paid around $10 Canadian for mine, so quite a bargain. But the cameras discussed so far are not what I want to focus on in this video. They have their uses, wide shots, head cam, train mounted, but none of them is really a good choice for shooting action video of trains passing on the layout. For that, I really want something with a proper viewfinder so I can set up shots and know exactly what I'm getting. And of course, I want a good quality video result. Now, until recently, my main camera was an Olympus Tough TG310 that I bought something like 10 years ago, maybe a bit less than that. It was a good little camera. I used it as my main camera for taking still pictures, and I also used it for passing videos of trains, as it had a nice big LED viewfinder, and so was easy to set up. It also had an optical zoom, which made getting the right view easier. Now recently, after taking thousands of pictures and many videos, that camera started to act up, turning itself off randomly when I was trying to use it, and becoming harder and harder to turn on and keep on. So I decided it was time to replace it. I first looked at buying the current version of the Olympus Tough, but they've become insanely expensive by my standards. With tax, I would have had to pay over $600 Canadian for the current version of the Olympus Tough. And that just seems way too much for my limited requirements. I'm not looking to take professional quality pictures for print publication. I just want to take pictures for web use and maybe sharing with family via email and video to something like DVD quality. So I looked at what else was available, and I settled on the Panasonic Lumix TS30, which seems to have specs quite similar to my old Olympus camera and sells for around $200 Canadian. The Lumix camera uses a lithium-ion battery. I didn't want a camera that used pen light batteries. That's just not convenient for me, given the amount that I use the camera. I want something that will work for a long time off a battery charge, and that uses a small battery that can be easily swapped if the current one runs out. The camera, as I bought it, just the basic package came with one battery and a charger. The charger wasn't perhaps the most convenient, as it uses a USB cable, so to charge you need the charger itself, the USB cable, and something providing USB power, so a USB adapter if you're charging from a mains plug. 
When I bought the camera, I also bought two extra batteries, as I don't want to have to stop working just because the camera battery runs out. I also bought a 32GB SD card. The Lumix TS30 does actually have some internal memory, so you can take a limited number of pictures without putting in an SD card, but you can't shoot um, 720 pixel video without an SD card, and realistically no one is going to want to use the camera without a card, and it doesn't come with a card included in the standard package. I started using the Lumix camera back a few videos in this series, and you may have noticed the difference. I was generally very happy with the still pictures produced by the Lumix. It has an option for 12 megapixel 16x9 pictures, which are ideal for my YouTube work, and it has macro mode, built-in flash, optical zoom, etc., much the same as my previous Olympus Tough, but maybe a bit easier to control, if anything. However, I wasn't very happy with what the Lumix shoots in the way of HD video. HD, in this case, just means 1280 by 720 pixels. I would be quite content with that resolution, as I only post to YouTube at that resolution anyway, but I thought that the video shot with the Lumix seemed to be rather fuzzy, fuzzier than it should be for the stated resolution. It just didn't seem terribly good quality. Well, I know a lot of folks these days use their phones as cameras. And if I sound a little old-fashioned, well, I am. I only got a cell phone at all very recently. Basically so as to have a backup communication device should my home fibre connection fail, and also in response to safety concerns from my family. Anyway, I do now have a smartphone, specifically a 2021 Moto G Power Android phone, so I thought I'd tried shooting video with that. To shoot model railway video, I really needed a way to attach the phone to a tripod, so after looking at the options, I purchased this, an Ulanzi tripod mount for smartphones. I didn't go with a tripod made specifically for phones, as I already had a couple of OK camera tripods, I just wanted to be able to mount my phone to my existing photo tripods. And this Ulanzi device seems to do that fine. It's all metal, except for the knob on the end and some cushioning material on the jaws, some sort of foam rubber, so that it won't scratch the phone or the phone case. I clamped the Ulanzi adapter round my phone case, which is handier than having to take the phone out of the case, and seems to work fine. Although it is a bit hard to get at the buttons on the phone when it's clamped like this. I also just generally struggle with the phone, to be honest. Touch screens don't seem to like my fingers, and the phone often seems to think I'm trying to do something quite different from what I'm actually trying to do, or just not to recognise that I'm trying to do anything at all. Well, those are my limitations, I guess. I certainly find it easier to work with an actual camera with actual buttons, as again struggling with a touch screen on the phone, but if the phone takes better video, I'll use it unless I give in and buy yet another camera specifically for shooting video of this type. So anyway, on to actual trials of taking video with the phone. Here's the phone mounted on the tripod. For some reason, the phone doesn't seem to adapt to the sideways position on the tripod and shows things sideways on, which isn't very helpful, and I do have the auto-rotate option turned on. But anyway, now let's see some video shot like that. Okay, well, I am just trying, at least I think I am trying, to see if what sort of video, fake the price for us, I'm just going to move these things. trying to see what sort of video my phone can take of the railway and whether it's any better than the video that my Panasonic Lumix camera takes, which I wasn't all that happy with. So this isn't a test of the railway, it's just a test of the video. What we've got running on the, on the railway is the same as what we had basically last time I was doing stuff. It's uh, We've got the uh, Royal Scott that I replated to 6121HOI with the three coaches that came with it and the Bachman Jinty with the kit-built uh, cattle wagons on the inside loop. I can't tell how good this is going to be 
Now, if I put the thing's own lamp on, would that look better? I don't know. I don't know if that really helps or not. That's uh, putting on the, the... I've already got numerous lights shining on the railway, but that's adding the light from the phone itself to things. It does all look rather dim on the phone. I'll have to see whether it looks as dim when we, you know, get it, get it back and actually look at it on the computer. Okay, I'm going to stop the trains now. And then we'll stop the video, which is a bit awkward to do with the camera on the tripod. Hmm. I can't figure out how to do it at all. Well, that seemed to be better quality, sharper than what the Lumix produces, but it did seem rather dark, although I would have said there was quite a lot of light on the layout now. It certainly looks plenty bright enough to my eye, but the phone's camera appears to want more light. Let's just see some similar video shot with the Lumix for comparison. Okay, well now I'm going to see if I can shoot something close to exactly the same video with the Panasonic, so I can compare sort of apples to apples. See if we can. I don't know how close these videos are. There's different. There's differences in the framing and the zoom a little bit. But we'll see if we can compare these to each other and come to some conclusion which is doing the better job. If this needs to be too long, I'll maybe stop the trains as they come round. I suppose that's a bit dark as well, and it's definitely not as sharp as the video shot by the phone. At least that's what I'd say. Please post in the comments below as to your opinion of the video options and any other suggestions that you may have. Just one more try with the phone again with another light added. I clamped an LED reading light onto the tripod beside the phone to try to shed some extra light for the phone. Honestly, I find this camera uphill work to operate, the, the camera on the, on the phone. I struggle with it. And then I try to change the zoom and it thinks I'm trying to change the autofocus and whatever. I've tried to add a bit more light here. I'm just trying to moderate the speeds of the trains here. Keep them going, but I don't want them going too fast. I think that 
Royal Scot is going progressively faster as it sort of runs in with its new gear. Well, I don't know. Is this better? I just added some more light. I put another small light mounted on beside the camera because the camera, it seemed to be quite good quality, this camera, but very dim. Let's go around one more time and then we'll stop and see how this comes out. See if I'm going to do any better job of stopping the thing. Stump. The touch screen just doesn't seem to light my finger. Well, what do you think? Is the phone the best option for this type of running video going forward? It seems to take quite sharp and natural looking video, but it does seem to require an awful lot of light to produce a good result. Do you have suggestions for something that might be better for taking this kind of video at a reasonable price? If you do, please post below. Thanks for watching.